So this is the lab setup ENG installation we did uh, yesterday, right? So ENG Palo Alto. So this is a virtual machine we have installed inside this virtual machine we have installed ENG operating <coughs> Ubuntu operating system with along with ENG tool, right? So just switch on this operating system now. And today, so yesterday we saw how to install ENG. And today we are going to see how to upload the image files like routers, firewalls, right? Uh, switch. So these image files, whatever the tools we need to our hands on. It's that that devices image files we are going to upload and we are going to cross check whether the devices are working fine or not. Okay, and what are the process we need to focus uh, while uploading the image file? What are the requirements we need? And what are the procedures we need to focus? Right. So everything we'll see in this session, guys. Okay, and guys, please, this is a very important session. So even though it's it's not a part of our course curriculum right so the guys will have lot will do you, you guys will do a lot of mistakes in this portion only so you can install ENG you can and everything you'll do properly but the thing is when uploading the image files there you did a lot of in, in my experience I saw a lot of the students they're doing keep keep on I'm educating this lab <coughs> lab session in age in every batch I'm not sharing the recorded video in this I'll live session. I'll take it. I'll and then I'll I'll show whatever the error you may, <clears throat> what are the mistakes you may made, right? So everything I'll show, but still that error, that error is not fixing from your end. I mean the guys not able to fix the error if they are getting any special kind. I mean any kind of error, right? So if <clears throat> if you I'll I'll tell you what are the type of error may come. And if the error, this kind of error is coming, then what are the points you need to note and you how to fix that error? That everything I'll show you, you know, practically. Okay. Please <clears throat> focus on this session, guys. Okay. So, okay, fine. So, yesterday we, while installing this ENG operating system, we given a static IP address for the ENG management console, right? So, 192.168.0.100, that is an IP static IP address to access the management console of ENG operating system. Either you can access through CLI and GUI. Okay. So, before going to the uh, image uploading process, I just want to make sure. So, what are the consoles way what are the ways we can able to access the ENG or what are the methods we can take a consoles of ENG operating system guys ENG operating system can be accessible in which mode? What are the modes? What are the protocol? Okay, HTTP and SSH. Exactly. Okay, so then if I'm going to access my ENG console through HTTP, what is the credential? Username is the admin and password is we are using Eve community edition. That community edition will not support HTTPS protocol. So make sure while accessing the console through uh, HTTP protocol. Okay. So don't put HTTPS and then this IP address and all, then you will not able to access the console. You will get error. Okay. So, <clears throat> network unreachable error you will get. Okay, and second console, SSH. Okay, through SSH, or you can say it's a CLI. Okay, so CLI means it will come Telnet. Okay, you can able to take it at uh, SSH only. Okay, the username, what is the username, guys? 
in this scenario. Username is the root. Password is again e with small letter. And which case we need to access HTTP console? Which case we need to access SSH console? <laughs> exactly ssh you if you want to upload any uh, devices uh, operating system file or image files like router switch firewall then that you can't able to do in a http i mean gui console that you can able to do it on cli and by the help of tftp protocol application which is supporting by you can't directly upload the image files but by the help of the tftp application only you uh, any application which is supporting the tftp protocol right so that application so either filezilla filezilla or <coughs> win scp it's a free resources you can download in the internet as well okay so in that case you need to access the uh, <clears throat> ssh console credential root user credential you need and then if you want to configure the ip address of your uh, evng dead uh, evng in, in your evng operating system we have a nine virtual almost zero to nine virtual adapt adapters so virtual network adapters so in that network adapters you want to assign the ip address then you need to go to the ssh console only and if you want to manage your storage okay so most of the scenario you will we will not go this we don't need to do that and all but still i'm i'm just sharing these are all the possibilities when you these are when you are going to access your uh, for storage to cross check your hard disk space or to cross check your IP address of other interfaces, right? And that and all, you can't able to do it in your GUI console, okay? <clears throat> okay, so in that scenario, we'll go with the SSH console. And when we are going with the CLA, uh, sorry, GUI console, HTTP, whenever you are going to work with the devices so you, when you want to do your hands on lab right so drawing the topology and working with your lab so that case <clears throat> and whatever the images you have uploaded you want to do hands on with that images then you can use this http console access okay gui console access clear guys and this when we when we need to access SSH console of your EVNG operating system and when we need to access the HTTP console of your EVNG operating system. Clear in this? Okay, so <clears throat> today before working your lab, right? So on the, uh, by the help of this emulator, we need to upload the necessary tools, right? So uploading the necessary tools we are going to access through SSH console or it's already, I'm in a, I'm, a, I'm already in a SSH console only here. Okay. So I can able to access, uh, I mean, so first thing is we are not going to cross check. I mean, we are not going to test the internet connectivity ping or we are not going to assign the IP address. We are not going to check the storage and all. We are going to upload the image file. So I need one third party application. So that application should support the TFTP protocol and while access that protocol, it will ask the, ask the credential. So this credential you need to provide. Okay. You should not provide this credential while uploading the images. Okay. Root user credential you need to provide. Okay. So first, 
before upload the image files go to your gui console and cross check whether any devices are pre configured or i mean any image files of router switch any devices are pre configured pre uploaded that we are going to cross check first what is the ip address 192.168.0.100 and username is now i am accessing the gui console username is all our small letters guys okay admin password is e native consoles okay. and this is my workspace and you guys very first time you will get sorry It will be look like this very first time when you are logged in and that the folder will not be there. Yesterday we created this folder under Palo Alto folder. I want to do lab whatever the lab I want to perform regarding Palo Alto training program so that I can able to make it here. Okay, this is for testing purpose. We just open this lab and here we are going to test whatever the image files we are going to upload that files are working fine or not right. So this is my workspace here i can add my topologies and all right so to add my topologies i need some devices whatever the based on my need whatever the product i'm going to work on right so that product i need to use it right so here we are doing palo alto so while doing a palo alto it's not only having palo alto we are not able to complete your program right training program so just in palo alto is mandatory one and after that we need at least one switch and router to switch need to connect your internal network router need to connect with the multiple networks and then we need one client windows or linux any client machine we have windows as of now okay so windows client machine for <coughs> accessing the GUI console of Palo Alto. So management activities, we need one Windows machine, and then connecting with your end user of your LAN network, right? So we need some end <coughs> endpoint devices. So that PC we need. So we are going to use that Windows machine itself, and then later on the sessions, right, middle of the uh, course. We are going to integrate Active Directory server. So Windows server we need. Yeah. And later on this session, this course, we are going to access, we are going to see how, how about the panorama firewall, right? So, sorry, panorama management device. We need a panorama. Okay, panorama. So, <clears throat> two, three, four, five. Almost six devices, six different prod devices we need to work with your Palo Alto labs. Okay. So, as of now, we are not going to upload this one. We are not going to upload this one. We are going to upload this one. This. And Palo Alto, we are going to upload it based on the timing. Um, Initial, we are going to do initial configuration Palo Alto firewall in after completion of your uh, platform and architecture unit. Okay, so that time again we are going to install, we are going to use the Palo Alto firewall from the scratch. So I just want to do it there. Before that, you guys need to complete your lab setup. So all these images. So I'm going to show you with the switch router and Windows machine as of now what are how to upload the image files and what are the possibilities of getting error and how to fix it everything i'll show you guys okay clear so <clears throat> so let's go to the before that i just want to check whether any image files i have it so if you want to add in your topology if you want to add any space any devices first you need to go to empty workspace add right click your mouse okay and you can see that add a new objects in that select node 
you can able to see listed installed devices as of now the ins these are all the supported okay you can see that some uh, something is in a div uh, it's <coughs> in a gray color uh, right so this is our listed uh, listed devices which is supporting by the your pal sorry your evng operating system but these devices are not uploaded into the evng as of now you can upload that device operating system and you can able to do your hands on in your evng okay but you can see that only virtual pc is highlighting the highlighting by the different color blue color and you when i good when i cross the cursor into the virtual pc and that is going showing me it's a different symbol and when i cross other devices it's showing some band i mean uh, denied kind of images right so which means that devices are not uploaded into your operating ung operating system that device operating system is not uploaded not yet uploaded in your ung operating system so even though that the, these devices will be supported by ung if you are uploaded the images of these devices you can able to do hands on with your ung okay as of now only virtual pc just type virtual pc this is a it's, it's in a dummy pc we, we, which you can able to do test purpose like test ping uh, trace route ping these commands only you can able to execute okay so just like a dummy pc it's not supporting the gui console and it's not supporting other services okay so res it's predefined one. You no need to install it anywhere else. It's it's come with your operating even the operating system itself predefined. So now we know what are the image files we need to our hands on. So that image files we need to upload it. So to upload the image files, right now we are in a GUI console, right? So it GUI console you can <coughs> you cannot upload any image files. So that if you want to upload the new image files into your EVNG operating system, then you need to go to an, uh, <clears throat> you need to uh, use one third party application, which is supporting the TFTP protocol directly. You can't able to upload. So third party application here, I'm having WinSCP. Okay. So in my machine, I have WinSCP, WinSCP application. And when I open that WinSCP application, right? It's asking asking me to log in with this site, right? So, so this is my existing <coughs> machine IP address. So I just want to go to new site. Okay, very first time you guys will be. It will be look like once if you are installed that after install your even G sorry Win SCP in your base machine. Okay, so. WinSCP need to install in your uh, in your local machine where you have uh, other image files. Okay, so in my let's see, this is my storage. Okay. So these are all the image files I have. So this is uh, this image files I'm I'm having with my local machine, my local storage. Okay. So this WinSCP application also I have uh, uh, installed in my local machine only because from here from my local machine only I'm having source file. That file I need to copy, right? So <clears throat> so Cisco router switch and router Windows machine, right? Palo Alto. Palo Alto files, right? <coughs> so these are the files we are going to upload. So from your the, the source where you are having your, your source file, there you need to install WinSCP application and that local machine to your EVNG should be reachable, guys. Since EVNG I have installed in my laptop itself, right? So both as of now, this is my base operating system running with windows right and here i have installed this is my local storage here i'm storing my image files everything and inside that 
also we are ha i am uploading i am having vmware workstation inside that vmware workstation i am having evng operating system and so from my local operate local machine to my evng operating system i am going to upload it okay so i should i should make sure i am having reachability between my evng operating system and my local machine okay where i have that image files in that machine in case if you have uh, installed your evng operating system in a windows sorry uh, in a google cloud in that case this is your local machine where you have whatever the image files i'm going to share with you that you are going to download and you are going to store in your machine and your evng server will be in a google cloud okay so in that case you need a reachability you need to make sure you can able to reach your evng if you have a internet and your evng will give a one public ip to access the console so obviously you will have you will have a reachability between your local machine to your e evng server cloud based evng server so once if you have a reachability then you are going to upload the image files from your local machine to your evng server which is placed in clo cloud okay so in that case based on your internet connectivity the image files will be uploaded so windows 10 and all it's it almost 10 gb Palo Alto almost two, two, sorry, three GP to four GP. Okay, and Panorama four GP. Okay, and <clears throat> Cisco router and switch and all five twelve MB to six hundred MB some. Okay, <clears throat> so this is very uh, smaller files, but these three devices, Windows machine, Windows uh, server, almost. 6 gb something 6 gb yes okay so these files will take time to upload in your cloud machine okay so based on your internet connectivity you can upload it okay it's totally depends on your internet reachability and internet speed only guys okay so in our scenario local locally we are installing in your laptop or desktop itself so your image files will be in your base operating system and then you are going to upload it into the evng so all you need you need to cross check whether you have a reachability between your <coughs> local machine to your vm uh, evng vm guys so that's the reason i told you to take a network adapter card option as a bridged mode so you can directly communicate with your lan network so with your uh, via your physical network okay so in case the store your virtual your evng is installed in a different machine and your files are in a different machine in your local so you have, obviously you have a reachability so you can able to upload from your land resources as well in that case okay and okay so let's cross check the reachability before uploading the image file okay so i know what is my ip address evng or uh, IP address that is 192.168.0.100 and that is my IP is 192.168.0.6 and both are same network so obviously I'll get the internet so reachability okay okay yes I can able to get the reply which means I'm having reachability between my local machine to my EVNG operating system so now I can able to upload the image files okay so to upload the image files you need third party application called WinSCP. with this application you can download in the internet it's a freeware okay so also i'll share that application the necessary tools and applications i'm uploading it one by one okay so today end of the day you will get the uh, uh, all image file um, <coughs> image files and then <coughs> so yes image files and then your evng operating system and then VMware Workstation application, right? And WinSCP application, and then Windows Client Pack application. Okay. <clears throat> Everything you will get it. <laughs> okay, guys. So now, once you when you are open this application, very first time it will be look like, and you have to choose SFTP protocol. Okay. By default, it will select with FTP only. Okay. So you have to use SFTP protocol. 
and then under the host name you have to provide your ip of your um, evng operating system management ip of your evng operating system what is the ip address we are now we are trying to communicate through the sftp protocol <coughs> from your local machine to your evng operating system so what is the ip address 192.168.0.100 is your evng operating system and then username right username here only the credential we have to provide the root credential root password is e because we are uploading the image files if you are giving a username as admin password is Eve. See what is showing that access denied. Okay, so username and pre entered password is wrong password, it's access denied. You can't able to access the CLI, uh, right, by the help of GUI admin credential. Okay. So now what we have to do, we have to provide the actual password. Actually, the password is same, but the username is different, right? So just cancel it and make it username is root. Password is Eve and just log in. And now you can see we are logged in. Okay. So left side, there are in this application, there are two partition. Left side partition is your local storage, guys left side partition is your local storage your local machine storage your hard disk and right side partition slash root it denotes you are in a eve storage okay even the hard disk so where you are going to upload the image files root directory you are in it okay so you have to upload the image files in this left side from your left side to right side you need to move the car whatever the file windows or router switch palo alto any whatever you want to upload it right so that you need to upload from your local storage to your evng storage your left side partition it's again i'm saying that left side partition it's denote your local storage so your hard disk the particular which directory you are in it right here you have selected the directory which directory you are in it based on the directory whatever the folders whatever the files you have that you can able to see it of your local machine local storage yours okay and then right side it's your it's your eng operating system okay and <clears throat> so now let's say i just want to upload the switch so this is the switch file viios l2 we are using cisco virtual ios operating system Okay, file. <coughs> so this is your switch file. Okay, so I just want to copy paste. Uh, I want to upload here. So upload into EVNG operating system. This is my EVNG operating system storage. So if I'm going to upload, right? So uh, to upload this file, just click and drag where you want to upload it. Okay, just click in your local storage and drag into your right side corner. So we are, which means we are moving the, we are taking a copy of file into your local machine to your EVNG operating system. Okay. And now you can see that is uploading here. Okay. So now I have uploaded one image file, right? The switch image file. So I need to cross it whether that file is <coughs> uploaded successfully and we can able to use it in your work workspace or not that we need to check it, right? So let's go to your to check your uh, device availability and your workspace. You need a GUI. You need to go to the GUI console and just refresh on okay and just right click your node. What file we have added? Virtual Cisco Virtual IOS operating system VIOS, right? So just type VIOS here. Cisco VIOS router and switch. We uploaded a switch, right? It's not showing that image files we have uploaded right but it's still it is not showing that if it is uploaded just like virtual pc it is highlighted by the blue color like likewise it should highlighted by the cisco viy switch should be highlighted because we uploaded a cisco viy switch operating system only but it's not 
it's i it's not available here okay <clears throat> then what is the reason then go to your win scp again and again see that the image file is there inside that operating system also there everything is fine right but still it's not showing in my list of installed devices under my node list it's not showing it okay the reason you cannot upload here and there in your even though you have uploaded the image files into eng operating system so eng storage right so you should not upload just like here and there evngs to detect the particular devices operating system it's it's follow some <coughs> sorry guys some it can able to detect the uh, image files <coughs> by the help of <coughs> it's uh, sorry for that it's it's it follows some rules okay and uh, <coughs> it can able to detect by the uh three type of eveng inside the eveng you can upload the image files three type of image files qmu files okay iol image files and someone is i forget that okay so <clears throat> you should not upload this image file here and that you have to upload into the right direction right pro okay this is an operating system guys not just in a file we are storing it this is an operating system the operating system can be detected in the proper directory when you are having a proper storage proper location you are store you are uploading your operating system then only your eveng can able to detect the image files okay so you should not upload here and there this image file should be uploaded okay just what i'm going to do so just leave it as it is and actual image files need to upload in a root directory slash root go to root directory slash root it's a main directory and after that opt go to opt optional and then unit lab slash unit lab and add ants go to add ants under unit lab and you dynamic sorry iol and dynamic three, these three image files only your eng can detect and whatever the image files we are i'm going to share with you that is qmu type of files okay <clears throat> so you you need to upload under qmu type of file your eveng need to know you whatever the uploaded image files it's basically which form dynamics or or iol or qmu if it is a qmu it's need to uh, read uh, the repositories to select the uh, to uh, identify the proper operating system okay so you need to upload actually the image files you need to upload under this directory okay under qmu directory because we are using dot q cow to files dot q cow to files or qmu file qmu type of files okay <coughs> so you need to upload that files under qmu directory only and this is the proper location where you have to upload okay so under qmu first you need to select the qmu inside that qmu directory only you have to upload the image files so this is the the actual location where you have to upload your image files because in case if you are using iol image files or dynamics image files under add and you have to choose iol or dynamics based on your image files but in our scenario we are using qmu type of files so you need to upload the image files under qmu directory guys clear so now add and qmu <clears throat> now what i'm going to do here i'm going to upload that switch again the same switch file okay and go to here so vivsl2 and just click and drag now you can see that vivsl2 switch is there now go to your workspace and refresh one more time and again just cross check with a list of installed devices nodes and type vios now you can see that switch is highlighted previously only virtual pc is only highlighted by the blue color right and now your cisco v switch vios switch also highlighted so if it is highlighted like this your eveng operating system can detect the 
root directory of your Cisco, image file directory of your Cisco switch. It doesn't mean it is selected the, it is detected the op exact switch operating system. It, <clears throat> whatever you have uploaded under QMU directory, you followed some, you have uploaded one more directory in the name of VIOS L2 and after that add with some something after hyphen the some name is there and inside this directory only you have one file that file is nothing your switch operating system okay so as if you are able to see that your cisco vios switch is there i mean it is highlighted it doesn't mean that image file is properly uploaded that switch cisco operating system is there so properly working it is detecting only by the help of this folder. By the help of this folder, your EVNG is decided some operating system file is uploaded in the name of VIOS L2. So if a VIOS L2 means VIOS means it's a Cisco switch. Cisco IOS operating system, virtual IOS operating system. So by this keyword VIOS L2. This is a keyword to detect your VNG can assume. So this directory contains some uh, Cisco VIOS operating system. It's a L2 device. Okay. So just like that, it will cons it will just uh, <clears throat> consider inside the directory. We have one operating system. That operating system may be Cisco router. Uh, sorry, Cisco switch. Just like that, it is considering and it is listing in here list of installed devices. But your operating system, your machine will be work based on this image file only. And to detect this operating system, you should have a proper directory. Each and every device have uh, different kind of uh, directory and okay, <clears throat> the file name. Most of the scenario verito.qcov2 or hda.qcov2 these two type of files we are going to use okay and but your switch also having the same file type verito.qcov2 and router also have going to have a same file type okay and mesh, windows machines also going to have same file type sometimes windows 10 have hda.qcov2 but windows 7 verito.qcov2 Okay, these these are nothing. It's an just in a storage file, guys. Storage format. Okay, so virtual dot to hta dot right. So this is an a bootable operating system inside this bootable. This is an a hard disk. Inside this hard disk, we have each operating system, and that operating system may be switch router or firewall anything. So to detect properly your EVNG, you need to make sure if you are uploading the switch image file and you need to say that is VIOS L2 that based on the folder name, it will be added your image files. So this part is very crucial guys. So sometimes you will get confused. Okay. So here the students are doing the mistakes here only. Most of the students are doing mistake here only. Okay. So your <clears throat> it's nothing. We are just uploading the different kind of operating system, different kind of image files, and that EVNG can detect. Let's say I'm simultaneously I'm uploading router, switch, right, and firewall. Let's go with that. Go back with the, I'll show you the image files. So right, like so, this is my router image file. Inside the router, you can see that file type is virito.qcov2. Right, and then L2, same file name, right? And Windows 10, it's an hta.qcov2, but other windows, let's go with the windows. See, this is Windows 7, right? Verito.q, uh, after hyphen, I'm, I'm giving, my, for my understanding, I have two image files in this, so the sometimes it will confuse, so, for my understanding, I have renamed it as Virto and then Windows 7 and Windows 2016 server like that. But in a, one while uploading the image files into the EVNG, you should not give like this Windows server or Windows 7, Windows 10 like that. You should give just 
as it is the file. This is not a file. This is an operating system. Make sure. Okay. This is not a file. This is in a hard disk. Inside, we have one operating system. Okay. So that might be switch or router or Windows. It's a bootable device, guys. We told that QCOW2 is the bootable file. Okay. Inside that, they may, there is an... <coughs> <laughs> there might be any operating system so make sure so which file you are uploading uh, what most of the scenario switch router firewall or firewall windows machine Okay, hd.qcout2 to okay, this is the same file name. So, whatever I am sharing, right, don't try to download directly, don't try to download the file directly. I am going to upload the uh, with the proper directory, try to download with directory itself. Okay, so that you can able to understand some, it's, this file is belongs to Windows machine, this file is belongs to switch, this file is belongs to router, like that you can able to understand. If you are download the files only, and just look at the file types. This is also the dot qcow to router l2. And router also dot virtual dot qco to same file name so same file name if you are trying to upload directly and simultaneously what it will do it will rename it first it will download one first file so that might be router or switch second file again one dot qco to the same file name it will automatically rename it because there is existing file so it, it will rename it so this time you can't able to understand this is belongs to switch or this is belongs to switch or this is belongs to router or this is belongs to router okay so you there is a chance you are going to upload the wrong file in the wrong directory okay so that's the reason i'm saying it please try to download one by one and also try to download with the proper directory name whatever i have uploaded as it is try to download it so that you will not make mistake if you, <clears throat> if you are trying to download with the file name right so it will automatically rename it or don't try to rename yourself as well to understand uh, now i have downloaded so i know while downloading that this is a router image file so after download i'm going to rename it router.qcout okay like that you can able to <coughs> Thing and you can able to download as well and switch dot qcow to if you're uploading this file these files will not work okay because this is the bootable file you should not rename it router switch firewall like that and your directory also you should not rename it router firewall like that your evng will use some keyword to detect the proper operating system <coughs> inside the directory okay so that is i'll i'll show you i will do mistake and i'll show you what will be like this okay so okay fine so as of now we have uploaded one switch right so let me refresh everything is properly we upload it if you go to here and the directory we are under qmu files only we have uploaded and then directory name is vios l2 and after hyphen anything might be there okay before hyphen you should have a proper keyboards okay and inside that virtual.qcow2 right everything is fine so now go to GUI console so, sorry my workspace and refresh it and i just want to add my switch type vios yes it is highlighted which means that device is properly uploaded and that properly detectable now just click ok okay and <clears throat> This is your uh, hardware customization and which kind of operating system you are going to use. You may have multiple switch. Okay, so image file. So in, in that case, you can select that which switch you want to use it and how many number of switch node you want to use it, right? So one or two, that number of nodes you can able to select and you can customize the hardware resources to that switch. How many number of CPU you want to allocate, how much of RAM you want to allocate.
okay and then how many ports you want to have in your switch so that you can customize right and after that the console switch console you are going to use telnet or vnc rdp this is the different type of console types which is supporting the guis rdp is for windows right and vnc will support the gui console and for cli console we have to choose telnet so where if you want to take a telnet or ssh in this console type this is a uh, virtual uh, this emulator console type you have to select telnet and after once if you enable ssh the ssh also will work properly but this is a consoling type the telnet means gui and uh, vnc means sorry telnet means cli here and vnc means gui and cli both it will support and rdp is for windows remote desktop okay, okay. so whatever the, if that console type we can choose it for windows machine itself okay and vnc we can use it for palo alto the machine which is supporting gui and cli both you can select with the vnc console type okay so as it is uh, we, we are working with cisco devices so this cisco devices will support only cli so choose sorry choose your cli console here 512 ram 8 port is enough okay and then two number of nodes i want to use it and the console type is telnet fine so save it and then you can see two switches added in your workspace so now what i'm going to do i'm going to cross check whether my this device is working fine or not go to start to start your machine right click and start or stop your machine right go to your place your cursor on the device above the device and right click your mouse and then the action whatever you want stop or start okay that you can do it and i have started this machine and to access this this is the virtual uh, virtual tool right in case it is in a physical search right so physical hardware you have in a direct this is in a switch and this in switch under switch we have a console port and you can connect with your devices and you can start to access the <coughs> your basic setups and you can start to can you access the console cli console either telnet or ssh you can able to do it after completion of your basic setup through console cable and you can able to take a uh, telnet or ssh right so now it's in a virtual of virtual emulator right so the console if you want to access in your in any particular devices right then you can just directly go to that device and double click on it based on the console type you have chosen on that particular device that console will open Okay. and this console will open when you have uh, we i have chosen a telnet so what this is to telnet is opening through putty application as of now right so you can see that this is my putty application which is supporting the telnet as such right so so i have chosen a telnet console and when i click double click on that machine it's open with that cli console with a putty right putty application putty is a nature of native application for telnet ssh services so i am accessing the telnet from my switch from on my switch machine right okay so <clears throat> as of now i accessed right let me uh, check i mean the consoles of switch so i can able to work with my switch which is working right a virtual ios operating system is installed properly and it is booted and i can able to see the console of my switch which means my switch is working fine as of now and <clears throat> the console i am opening with a third party application tool called putty and putty is the native Put putty will support the telnet and ssh console if you are open that consoles by the help of any third party third party application which is supported i mean for that supported services and that console is called native console okay now i open the uh, switch console 
by the help of native console types in my evng okay now what i'm going to do i'm going to close my uh, okay see previously i have chosen a console native console type okay so whenever i double click to access the console it is open the telnet and telnet open <coughs> by the help of putty application and putty putty application is naturally it will support the oh, <coughs> for telnet and ssh services so this console type is called native console okay and evng also have one more it will support one more console and to access this native console you need to install one application in your base machine where where you are accessing your lab on which machine you are doing your lab right so in that machine so here we are doing our lab in your base machine by the help of one browser right so that in that base machine you need to install windows client pack so because i am having a windows machine if you are having a base machine as your linux or ubuntu then you need to install linux or ubuntu client pack if it is in a mac operating system you need to install mac client pack in your machine to access the proper console <coughs> with a native type of application like telnet i want to access putty through putty application ssh i want to access through putty application and for rdp i also i need to want to access rdp services with the rdp application windows rdp application Okay. and <clears throat> right so these are the consoles you can able to access it and <clears throat> with a proper up right application in the right way right application if you want to access that console type is native console and same switch i can access through telnet without any native application as well so that is without putty application or any SS, telnet supporting application right without any application i can access the switch tell uh, gui con cli console through telnet telnet services and uh, i without rdp application i can take windows console windows gui console right so that and all i can able to use <coughs> when i have a my login i mean my console type i'm choosing my console type as html5 console okay so the same switch now i'm going to access with a different way so i'm going to access with a html page okay the same switch now i access the console see it is not opening any putty application it's open through my web page Okay, so in this scenario, you no need to install any application, guys, in your base machine. You need to install only EVNG operating system and you need to upload the image files and you need only browser to access the consoles. Okay, it's not only for switch. Your Windows might operating system also will run in this HTML file itself. Okay. <clears throat> so this is the difference between the HTML file console type and native console type. Let me again close this and show you that sorry log out admin eve and console type this time i am selecting native console and again try to access the same switch console now you can see it's prompting to open the telnet client client application yes now you can see i have a separate console application uh, separate console with a putty application because the putty is a application which is made to support the telnet services okay but here when i use html5 the html5 means it's in a web it's using web services and it's in a web page we are taking a telnet only we are taking a telnet through web page this is not a actual original service right i am taking a telnet through web services So that's the reason they name it for that the native console. I'm taking a telnet through putty application or any other um, <clears throat> secure putty, right? Any other application, if you if you are using to access the CLI console, 
that is called native application we are using native application so wait native application or native console you can say but <clears throat> if you're accessing the same telnet or ssh services are um, rdp services by the help of web pages html5 pages then this is called html5 console Okay, so HTML5 console, you no need to install any application. It will dare you. All you need is you need browser. That's it. You no need to install any application. And it's a you. It's little bit faster than the native console. Okay, and <clears throat> but you sometimes better visibility. If you need a better visibility, let's assume I'm going to access my Windows machine in a browser. You will. Is it good visible? You will get a good visibility. It's not going to, you're not going to have it based on your screen size. It, the visibility is not good. If you're having a, screen, a smaller screen inside, uh, you're already on running on browser inside the browser, you're running on machine inside that you're going to do some other activities in that Windows machine. You're going to assign the IP address, a lot of things. So the visibility, the screen is smaller. So visibility also a little bit difficult to understand when you're doing a lot of things in that particular machine okay so better if you get based on your choice guys you can go with the native console type or you can go with the html5 console type if you're if in your machine local machine if you're using an office laptop okay in your machine you can't able to install any application then you can go with the native sorry html5 console or uh, if you want in work with a putty or tell uh, rdp application of windows services right so anything you can you need to install that windows client pack okay so i'll give along with that windows client pack it's it's an a uh, it's integrated with multiple application so packet tracer wires are packet capture and then putty and then <clears throat> vnc viewer okay and then and other few applications we also it's going to be installed okay so necessary application only it's going to be installed so make sure everything is installed okay if you want to use a ss <coughs> sorry native console application so so that's all about the native console and then uh, whatever <coughs> html5 console difference and now what i'm going to do so we have uploaded properly the image files and router and switch sorry switch is working fine so the reason i have uploaded the image files in the right directory and right path sorry right as of right directory name and right file name now what I'm going to do first, I'm going to change the file type. Okay, so okay, fine. I'm going to change the directory name first. Okay, one of the error I'm going to do may I'm going to make it rename it. I'm not going to make that much big difference in this uh, in this name itself naming itself. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to just make it instead of a smaller case i'm going to make it as uppercase viys i'm not changing anything much okay i'm changing the case one case sensitive only from smaller case to uppercase i'm changing it the file directory name is fine right hit enter and now go to your workspace refresh this is your existing file existing image files right so now i try to add new switch your existing device, ex existing boot up, booter device will work properly because it's already booted based on previous file name, directory name, everything is fine. Now I want to add new device. Right click, re refresh and right click node type VIOS. Is it there? Your switch is listed now. I'm not changing anything much. I just make it the case sensitive only, right? From smaller case to upper case, I make it. 
I'm not changing the director name itself. Okay, I'm not modifying anything much, but it is not showing. Okay, the reason it's using some naming concepts to match or detect the operating system and it's use some keyword and that keyword should be all our smaller case first first condition the keywords must be in a smaller cases okay and <clears throat> the keywords defining that particular operating system okay so this is viys switch so if you go to the naming uh, again here you can see that viys l2 this is the keyword before hyphen whatever you are having it viys l2 this is for switch vi viys hyphen after that same anything whatever you can give it the version of operating system or name whatever you want switch router anything you can give it but before that hyphen right so based on that if it is in a palo alto or if it is in a windows windows hyphen okay if it is in a 14 net 14 net hyphen for all our small letters okay palo alto okay so it's using these some If it is a checkpoint, CPSG. Okay. So all are small letters. After hyphen, you can give it the name, version, and anything you can. <clears throat> you can give it anything. Anything you can give it after the hyphen. Whatever you can name, you can give your name as well. Anything you can give it because your fire, I'm sorry, your ENG will detect the operating system by the help of these keywords. Before hyphen, you should follow the proper naming concepts. Okay, after hyphen, whatever you want, you can give it. It's not going to affect your machine. Okay, see, I'm not changing like router, switch, or like that and all. I just changing the case sensitive from smaller case to upper case. Before hyphen, everything should be smaller case. Make sure, guys. Okay, and the right, <coughs> which file we have uploaded, that is Cisco switch file, so L2 file, and that is iOS operating system. So this is a virtual VM machine, right? Virtual iOS is the file name, and... <coughs> And then it's a switch. So you have to make it VIOS L2. Okay. V, sorry. V, smaller case. VIOS L2 after hyphen, like whatever you can give it. I'm going to make it. Switch. VIOS L2 switch. Okay, so after hyphen only I give it as a L2 switch. Before hyphen, if you're giving it as a switch, it will not detect. Okay, let's go with uh, your workspace and try to reboot one more time. Sorry, re refresh and try to add now VIOS. Now you can see switch is there. I can able to select the switch. I can able to add the switch and I can able to work with that as well. So let me switch name. Third switch. See, this is our new switch we added and just start that machine. Let's see what will happen. And I have added that machine. Just open the console. It's booting via iOS, virtual iOS. It's booting. Okay. Which means that image are so working fine. Okay. So <clears throat> in this scenario, what we have learned. So you have to use the proper naming concept and you should provide the e the name also, if you're given a proper name also, it has some case sensitive. So before hyphen, whatever you are giving it, it should be in a smaller case. Okay. Okay. Anything after hyphen, whatever you can want, you can able to do, uh, you can give it for your reference. Okay. <clears throat> but your mission will detect by the help of this keywords only. Okay, and I'm talking about only directory as of now.
I'm talking about only directory. I'm not talking about the inside the directory, whatever the file well, we are going to have it. The, I'm not talking about that. Okay. So your directory should have proper naming concern. Okay. So your, you should properly give it the name and all are case sensitive. Make sure it guys. Okay. So if you are uploading after upload the image file, you are getting that error your, in your workspace. It's not showing like, okay, let's go uh, one more file. I'll upload it this time switch. We will switch. So sorry, router, not switch. And this is that router file. I'm going to rename my router. This time I'm going to rename it my <coughs> again. So instead of small letter, I can make it as a caps as well, or just make, let's assume router. So I have created like this. I have downloaded the route file, router file. So I have created separate directory and make, I save that. So directly that direct uh, file, I have uploading it in the name of router dot router hyphen. Okay. <clears throat> Advanced enterprise. <laughs> Sorry guys. So now go to workspace. I have uploaded in my concern. I have uploaded, right? So let's see whether it is listed or not. So I have uploaded the virtual iOS of router and that should be highlighted, but it's not highlighted, right? The reason why if you are upload the image file of Cisco router or switch in, not only Cisco, any image file, firewall, windows, server, you have uploaded in the right directory right path under QMU only you have uploaded, but it is not listed. This is the error you are getting now. So then first of all, you need to cross check. What is the directory name you have given it? So the proper name you have given, if you have given a proper name also, let, as of now, I'm going to check and I'm saying that I given as a router, it's not a proper name to detect that router operating system. So I'm going to rename it again. VIOS is the proper name. VIOS is the proper name. And hyphen. So this time I've given a proper name, but this time I'm giving it a uppercase. Okay. Hit enter and <clears throat> so name is right. I'm seeing that I can see that name is right. VIOS. After that hyphen anything, we can able to give it for the router and then just go to here and refresh and write add node and type VIOS and it should select the, sorry, okay, a router. It still, it is not showing that in installed device list because your EVNG is not able to detect that image files. So then first we check it, the name, the name is fine. I mean, previously the name is different and then we rena rename it to the proper naming VIOS and, but still it is not listing here. Then you have to cross check the case, case sensitive, whether there is an uppercase or any other uh, improper naming I have given it so that you have to cross check, go to here and you can see that VIOS is a proper name, but I given it a uppercase. V, I make it as a uppercase. Okay. So. It's not only V, it's entirely a VIOS also. You can make it as a uppercase, but still it will move on to work. So because it's need to detect with a, I mean, it's need to start with a smaller cases. That is to, then only your EVNG can detect the operating system. So I make it now as a smaller cases. Now go to your workspace and refresh it and just add nodes, router, or just, sorry, V, See, now my router is listed. Okay, so now my router is listed. Even though if you're uploaded the file into your EVNG, it is not listed in your installed devices, then there is a possibility <clears throat> your file name is, a, I mean, your directory name is wrong or your directory have some case sensitive issues. Okay, these are the two possibilities. You made some mistakes. Okay, and a third possibility, Okay, this is one of the mistake, right? So these two mistakes you made, you may do. So make sure if it is not listed, first you need to cross check the directory name. 
is fine inside that queue move the directory is proper directory name you have given or not second the name is fine and then case sensitive you have to cross check the case sensitive third one more option is the one more rarely rarely i i saw this error from your guys but it's happened rarely but so that is also i'm going to show you that i want to show you guys okay so now you can see a router is there okay now what i'm going to do Okay, so now and now you can see that under QMU directory, I have one router, and again, I'm sorry, I have I have a router directory, VIVS are <coughs> the same directory. Inside that, I have one more directory. Inside that only, I have file. Okay, clear. So multiple direct um, after QMU, I have one directory or one folder which is having VIOS operating system. And after that, I have one more directory, multiple directory. And after that, finally, I have my files. Okay. So in that case, let's see. This is a chance because you guys are going to download my uh, whatever I'm going to share. And you're going to create one more folder inside that. Okay, so in there is a chances if you are creating like that multiple directory after QMU, I have one directory that my <clears throat> VAUS, the proper directory name is there. Again, the proper name only I have it, but again inside that directory, one more directory with a proper name again, that is also proper name. After that, only I have file. So there is no issue with a directory name. If you are checking in this scenario, you will check, keep on checking the directory name. Okay, the directory is fine. And then, oh, your case sensitive is not there. And all, all issues are fixed. I mean, the directory name is fine. There is no case sensitive. The proper under QMU folder only we have uploaded. Everything is fine. The file name also it's fine. But you will not able to see that. In that scenario, you will not able to see that node. Okay. So, okay, just refresh one more time. Sorry. In that scenario, it, it, it will be so the do directory, but it will give you the an, one more type of error. Let me show. Node. VIOS. Still, now you can see that router is showing. Router is showing. I'm going to add one router. And router started and try to open the console access. Okay. This is the second type of error, guys. Okay. This is the second type of error, but this is not issue with your file name. Okay. Again, it's related to your directory issue. Okay. That's the reason I'm showing here. If you open your switch or just switch on your switch. Can see 
switch is directly booting the operating system but go to your router see it's detecting the operating system it's i mean it's try to detect the operating system to boot the operating system let's keep on checking the operating system the router is shown here but router it's not able to detect the oper ios operating system to boot properly okay no more network devices finally the final error what you will it will check the all your in interfaces availability interfaces there is a chance to detect the operating system network operating system so your console your router is detected <clears throat> Your hardware is direct to, I mean, direct, try to direct the operating system. And finally, all available interfaces after checking the network operating system, finally, you will get error, no bootable device. If you are getting a no bootable device error, okay, if you are getting a no bootable device error, there are two, pos two, two possibilities. One, your inside the directory, file is there right you have to cross check the file name file name should be changed money any modification may be done in your file name so this is also case sensitive and proper time <clears throat> case you should have okay so there is a chance with the file name error okay so let's go with your router and cross check your file name so router the file name is fine virato.qcow2 it's all are small letters the proper name but still this it is showing this error if you are getting this error no bootable device no bootable device means one is file name issue another one is multiple folder after that your file okay so this scenario now uh, this error we are getting it's because of we are not having uh, directly we are not having the image files we are into the proper directory we have proper directory inside that proper directory we are having one more directory in that directory only we have file so your eng will not able to detect the operating system Okay, so that's the reason we are getting the no bootable error. Okay, so no bootable device error if you are getting, then you have issue with your operating system file name, naming concepts. Okay, and or else you, you have operating system, but that operating system have uh, inside your multiple directory. Okay, it's not in a proper directory, actual directory. It may be contain the multiple directories. Okay, so in the error now we are getting is multiple directory. After QMU, if, if we look at the switch, after QMU, there is a directory with the proper file name with the switch. And after the directory, that file I can able to access my ENG can detect the file directly. But when it comes to the router, this is the actual and after QMU, we have this is the right directory. Inside that, one more directory I have. Actually, your file should be here. Your file directly, you should not have any other uh, additional directory or sub directory and all. Okay. You here, your file should be there. Okay. So if you are getting this no bootable error, you have to cross check whether we have a multiple, our files inside the multi multiple directory. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to, where it is, copy. I'm going to place directly here and I'm going to remove this directory okay so if you look at the <clears throat> file path add on QMU after that we have a proper directory of router and after that file only is there there is no multiple directory inside the directory okay and now go to your console and refresh FI and if you are use the same device stop and now start that machine okay if you try to start that machine your machine will not boot because it's previous operating system uh, files it's try to boot so that if you are getting the error no bootable device error 
and after fixing that issue if you are drive with the same device you will not able to use the device so what you have to do now you have to use ref fresh device so viios and router choose that router and router name second router and okay now you go to router and start the machine and try to access the console now you can see that it's booted your it's detect the operating system and ios is booting okay router is booting now okay so um, i'm now i am in a, a router console so now i can able to access my router so whatever i want to do i <clears throat> in my router i can able to do it in this console right so i don't want to do initial configuration as of now and this is my router okay yes i can <clears throat> I can able to do everything. I can just assign the IP address, interface. I can choose any interface, right? So I'm, my router is working fine, guys. Okay, clear? So if you're getting a no bootable error, first you have to cross check. The file name is right. You're having a proper file name or not. And inside that file, the directory, if you have multiple directories or any other, multi any other subdirectory you have, so that you have to cross check. So proper file, even the file name is proper, then you have to check your directory. So multiple directory issue, okay? So now what I'm going to do, this time I have a proper directory and proper file as of now. This is the name file. I'm going to rename it. This is operating system file. I'm not saying, previously we renamed the directory name and we saw what is the error we'll have. Okay, if you're getting, if you're having an issue with your directory name, this, device will not be listed in your in installed devices in inside the evng but if a directory is fine but you have some issue with your file name or previously we have our, uh, uploaded the image files into the multiple directory inside the multiple directory so it's shown uh, it's list the device will be listed and you can select the device when you uh, add the device and try to uh, work with that device the device will not detect the operating system you will get a no bootable error right so that is one more error again if your file name is different so your directory path is directory name is fine and the path is fine and then but your file name is different i'm not changing much right or i'm not changing here i'm going to cross i'm going to change smaller case to upper case you guys are going to do that router switch router dot to switch dot to go Quick out to for like that for your understanding purpose while downloading. If you are directly upload that files, definitely you will get this error. Okay, add one more router now. Just go to refresh and node VIOS type VIOS router is still showing that because the directory name is fine and <clears throat> so it is showing it's showing under the install devices and I'm selecting that router. Okay. Mm router name name is router for my understanding because we have three different routers so which one are we newly added that i want to know so that's the reason i'm giving name router and start that machine machine is started and try to open the console now you can see 
it's going to the network adapter zero it's try to open the uh, it's boot process is going on and that now it is try to detect the operating system and now it's go to the network zero adapter card that is nothing you it, gigabit is in a zero slash zero in your router okay and there it's not able to detect the operating system and it's go to the another interface likewise how many interface you have it will try to look at the operating system in that each interface it's not able to detect finally it will give you the no bootable devices error See, finally no bootable device, which means there is no operating system. Okay, your file is, your directory is fine. Your file name, your the path you have uploaded the directory, right? So, and then file, everything is fine. But since your file name is in uppercase, okay, we, the file name also fine, but there isn't a case sensitive issue. So it's not able to detect, okay? make sure you should so just <clears throat> keep it in your mind guys so with the right name also i am giving it but it's because of the case sensitive issue it's not detecting the operating system so you should not give like, your name or anything what router switch like that and all you should not give the file name this is nothing it's an operating system it's an bootable file okay it, <clears throat> you should follow some keywords to detect the bootable devices okay so just make sure the right name you are giving it clear guys okay. so only installing installation process only uh, little bit difficult until unless you are not able to understand right so but when you're in this evng tool but when you are going to work with this tool it's more user friendly and it is it is more suitable for <clears throat> more complex topologies guys okay so that's the reason we are using this tool and now go to your workspace and refresh it and if you are trying to use the same router the file name is different when the router is booted that time that operating system is different so that operating system now it is not able to detect because we renamed it to that file so your device will not work so in that scenario you need to add new devices sorry Okay, router, select router, and now, okay, and start that machine, and try to access the console. Now everything is fine. It's booted the operating system. It's not showing that no more network devices are like that. Okay. Now VIOS is booting and your it is going to boot your router and that router will work properly, guys. Okay. So these are all the error you may do <clears throat> knowingly or unknowingly, guys. Okay. So because it's most of the scenario, everything while uploading the image files and while uh, doing everything, it's 99 percentage we are going to do in a right way only but the thing is uh it's a smaller smaller mistake which we are uh, uh, forget to discover okay so the error types if you are getting a you are uploading the image files and the and the folder is not there or installed devices are even though Uh, even though you have uploaded the image and installed device list under installed a devices list 
if you are unable to see that your device router switch firewall and you have to cross check the name of your folder and path of your folder under QMU path, the right path of uh, <coughs> slash OPT, uh, sorry, uh, slash root OPT under unit OPT, unit lab, under unit lab, add ons, under add ons, you should upload the, we are using a QMU files. You should go, you should upload the image files under QMU, under QMU, the right folder, you have given a right folder or not, folder name. Okay, so path, name, and case sensitive. Okay, these are all the three possible mistakes you may do. Okay, in that case, it will you after, even though uploaded the images, it will not be listed in your available node list. Okay, this is the first kind of error, and that error you can that error you can do it in a three ways. So, a different path name, path a different path you may give it, and different name you gave it into the folder in that directory or that case sensitive the file name is fine path is fine then the directory have some case sensitive case mismatch okay so that you have to cross check and the second kind of error no bootable device in that case <clears throat> file is file name is fine and then the location path is fine okay but inside that multiple folder than your file the file name is correct and then path you have uploaded under the QMO, but inside the QMO directly uh, you should have file name directory name Inside the directory, you should have file only, but instead of that, you have multiple folders, subfolders, right? So that and all, if you have, then you will get the no bootable device error. And the second option, one more thing, the file name. Inside the directory, file name of bootable file name, file name mismatch, the file name is fine, but still the file name is fine. Path is fine. There is no multi multiple folder inside that. Still, then case sensitive issue with your file. Okay. <clears throat> Clear, guys. So these are all the six ways you may do the two type of error code you will get installed devices list it's not showing in your installed device list this is a one error one type of error code and no bootable device that is another type of error code and these are all the possible errors you may do six type of errors you may do because of that you will get this result it will not show in your installed device list and you will get no bootable device error when you are try to work with that particular device clear guys so as of now, we have uploaded Swiss, Cisco switch and router Windows machine. We will upload it uh, tomorrow or, uh, while doing lab. Okay. So because <clears throat> the same error only, it's so the same process only you are going to use it for each device when you are going to upload it. The same procedure you have to follow. Any doubts in this guys? And one more mistake you may do, okay. So that is rare cases. Okay, thank you, thank you so much and for your feedback. Uh, for in when you're installed, Amal, when you're installing EVNG on cloud, you're talking about that? Yeah, one more case is that I'll tell you uh, uh, 
but before that i get i have some query from my other guy no if you may just device from yeah that is nothing it's you the same procedure you have to follow amal uh in this we are giving a host name right we given a local ip right in your cloud you will get one cloud machine ip address cloud evng server ip address that ip you will get when in your cloud when you are your whenever you are booting your cloud machine there you will get one public ip you have to provide that public ip here okay otherwise everything is same okay and <clears throat> for another scenario that's it hamal and and for other scenario mistake there is a one more mistake the rare case you may do right so in that case in your virtual machine go to your virtual machine settings network adapter card sorry processor you may this virtual intel vtx feature you <clears throat> you may not in so when you are using a vm uh, ovf file installation it's by default enable with this services in case unknowingly you are deselect that feature or your uh, some other is maybe deselect or you are forget to enable that if you are using a iso file installation you are forget to enable this feature okay okay so in that case you will get no bootable device error one more time no bootable device error everything is fine but you are forget to enable this feature let me show you that as well i'm going to shut down this virtual machine and edit virtual machine go to processor disable that feature click okay power on this machine <clears throat> okay and you can see that warning your you can able to see that error warning itself so this is supporting the nested virtualization feature so if you are not enable this feature okay inside the device whatever in, inside your evng right let's try again on the lab one more time now i am going to add one of the device router switch okay anything so router add our existing device also you can able to work but i just want to add new device okay just rename it ro5 okay so this is my new device now i am going to start that machine okay i'm starting that machine whenever you start that machine you it will be automatically shutting down this is the error see switch normal device whichever previously working properly also that is not booting okay double click on the switch if it's uh, see automatically it is going in a down state this is the final error okay this is the one more error if you are try to switch on your device sometimes it will show in uh, and it will highlight in the blue color it is started but when you try to access the console it will be automatically shutting down okay the reason this device is not able to detect the hardware resources be <clears throat> because of nested virtualization feature is disabled okay the intel vtx feature is disabled so that is the reason so what you have to do you have to enable that feature and directly you can't enable while machine is running okay so you need to reboot your machine one more time
now edit virtual machine settings processor enable that feature Now go to your workspace, refresh it and try to switch on the devices. Now you can see that devices are switching on and open the console. It is booted. Clear? Okay. So if you are disabled that VTX feature and that VTX feature is only giving you the hardware resource, allow, allow you to take a hardware resources when your device inside the evng whatever the device you have uploaded that devices is need to run so that device well to re, to run the device it needs some hardware resources like processor ram so that resources will not be allocated when you are disabling that feature okay so in that case whenever you try to boot that machine it will be shut down automatically okay this is the one more error these are all the possibilities. So this error rarely only you are going to do that manually. You are going to disable. Then only this error will get when you are using a OVA file format installation. Okay. 